So this is about slope. Slope is so easy. Why are we doing slope now? Well, because it's more complicated than just slope. Slope is like how steep it is. Like if you look at this, it doesn't look very steep, right? Because the slope at that exact spot on the curve is zero. That looks a lot steeper because the slope is actually negative. This is a positive slope. It goes up. So on a graph, do you get that every graphed line we do has some kind of a slope? Like, does that have a slope? Yeah. yeah. And it's how much rise and how much run you do to go here and here. This is the rise. This part's the run. Does that make sense to you? It's how far over and how far up you go. And the rise is the up part. So you go rise over run. All right, so how would you describe this graph to somebody? Well, you would probably could say, you know, let's say this is a, one of those game shows where you like win a million dollars if you can get the other person to draw this exactly right. You'd pray that they knew what the y-intercept was because then you could be like the y-intercept is four. Does that make sense to you? If they knew how, they knew math, you could tell them, so the y-intercept is 4. If they didn't know math, you'd have to say, start at the 0, 0 spot, like at the very middle, and then go up 4 and make a dot. But telling them how to draw the rest of the line would be harder. Do you get, you could tell them to go over 4 spots and then down 1 and put another dot? You see how that could be a way to explain it to them? That they just had to go over 4 and down one. Well, this is supposed to be rise over run. Would you please tell me, don't say it out loud, but write it. How much rise was there? Hint, it wasn't really rise. It was negative rise. I'm going to pause while you figure out the slope of that line. Who knew that I was talking about negative one for the rise? Okay. If you're like, what are you talking about? It's this part right here. See how we had to go down one? That's a rise of negative one. The run was this part, how much run did we have? Well, we went over one, two, three, four, so it's four. So there's your slope, negative one over four. Does that make sense? So you could take any two spots, and I wanna also make sure you get that. You could take this spot and this spot and do the exact same thing and say how much rise well, it goes down one. How much run? It goes over four. Any two spots that are nice, clean spots. You don't pick spots like this because you're like, where the heck is that? I don't exactly know. But you pick these spots. They're called lattice points where they hit exactly. You know, like when they hit like this instead of hitting like, you know, like it doesn't exactly hit in the right spot. Spots like this are called lattice points. One year I had kids look it up because nobody knew what to call spots like that. Lattice point. Okay, so anyways, that's slope. Do you know what linear means? It's got a base word. You could probably go down and say, oh, it means that it's on a line. Does that make sense? One thing that a lot of people don't know is when you say it's linear, that means it's a straight line. There's a difference, right? I mean, you could say... This is on a line, but that's not linear. Linear means straight line. Okay, slope, we just defined it. It's a rise over the run. An equation. A lot of people think this is an equation. 2x plus 6. It's not an equation, technically. What's it missing to be an equation? Yeah. And you need something on both sides. So, like, y equals. Now, that's an equation. Okay. And do you know what graphing? Well, you know what graphing means. You put it on a graph. Okay, so like here's something that's been graphed. And how about parallel and perpendicular? What kind are those? They're like train tracks. Say it. Parallel, good. Do you know what they're called when they make right angles? I bet you can tell by process of elimination. That means perpendicular. So if two things make right angles like this, that's called perpendicular. And I just put a little right angle symbol in there. Remember that from geometry? That means that's, that's 90 degrees, OK? 
Okay. All right. Getting through it. Got about 15 minutes until lunchtime. Positive slopes go like this. Negative slopes, they go like this. How can you describe it? I like to say it this way. As you go from left to right, positive ones go up. I mean, don't we usually read from left to right? So from the left side to the right side, this one's going up, so it's positive. As I read from left to right, that one's going down, so it's negative. Okay? So tell me, is that positive or negative? Negative. Hint, trick question, is this positive or negative? Zero. It's zero, good. Doesn't have a slope. How about this one, positive or negative? Negative. negative. Only one positive slope here, the whole thing, that's this one. Does that make sense? That one's positive, so it goes up as you read from left to right. So I'm going to give you one rapid fire speed round. Is that positive or negative? Positive. positive. How about now? Zero. Zero. How about that? Negative. negative. Okay, you get the idea. Here's a graph. Remember me saying spots like that aren't good because they're not a lattice point? So I'm not going to take that spot. But take this spot and take this spot. And you should be able to tell me the slope. I already know it's positive because it's going up as I read from left to right. How much rise? How much run? Jack, how much rise? Two. How much run? One. If I put two over one, you have the slope. What is it? Two. Slope of two. That makes sense? Okay. This one. It's got a lot of dots you could pick. Those two... These two, I mean, there's an infinite number of combos you could pick. But if you go from one to the other, how much rise, how much run, don't say it, write it, and then think to yourself, what's the slope then? Rise of negative one, run of one, negative one over one. Who had an answer of negative one? Good. If you put it over one, that's fine. That's legal. It's just kind of not simplified, but... Negative 1 over 1 would have been a good answer, too. Rise over run. Any questions about these? Okay. If I give you two points, this one's the y's over the x's, because you remember how I said it was rise over run? You take the y's and you subtract them over the x's, and you subtract them. And I always start here. If you can start at the very end of the problem and do that minus that, you'll probably do the rest of it right. So if I'm going to do a slope here, I go 22 minus 10 over did you like logic figure out it was 9 minus 5? So that's 12 over 9 minus 5 is 4. 12 over 4 gives you a 3 slope. Notice it was the y's over the x's, and they're subtracted. Start with 8 minus 8, and you don't even have to go any further. You know why? Because what's 8 minus 8? Zero. And do you get 0 over anything is equal to 0? The slope is 0. It is. It is. Because the bottom doesn't matter. I know the bottom would be 5 minus negative 3 which is like 5 plus 3, but I don't care because 0 divided by 8 is still 0. It's all fine until one of them gets weird like that. But it's 0. What's the kind that just doesn't exist when they have 0 on the bottom? They have a 0 on the bottom, they won't exist. All right, so this one. 20 minus 0 is how you start. Everybody finish it. Negative 4 minus negative 4. If you're not careful, you wouldn't have caught that there was two negatives. Remember, it's negative 4, and then it's always minus the other thing. 
So there's two negatives in there. That really means plus. This one is 20 over zero. I just talked about that. What is that? Is that zero? No, that is not zero. What is that? It's not 20 either. I like DNE. Do you know what that stands for? Does not exist. That's one of the fastest ways to write that. If you said the answer was zero, you're wrong. A zero slope looks like this. If I graphed the slope on this thing, what it would be is straight up and down. And they consider that to be, it doesn't exist. It's too steep to describe. You can't even explain it, it's that steep. Okay, so if there's a zero on the bottom, the answer is, I'm gonna accept DNA as probably the easiest way to write it. it does not exist. Yes? Um, so is that the same as like saying undefined? Yes, I would accept undefined too. That's a very good answer. Undefined is an okay way to do it too. Okay, so here's a bunch of notes that are all on one page. Do you guys remember Y equals MX plus B? It was a really big thing in algebra. We're gonna use it again in this class. And that's where the slope goes, right there. It's the M. Inputs are the X's and outputs are the Y's, in case you didn't know that. This part here, it's the Y-intercept. It's where it touches the Y-axis. So if they gave you this one, you'd know that that's the slope and that's the Y-intercept. Look, it hit the y-intercept at 4, and it went down to and over 3. Does that make sense? This was the rise of down 2 and the run of 3. I really like that notes page. So if I had to write an equation for this, the first thing I would want is the slope. Have I trained you well enough to pull a slope out of this? Hint, those two points are the only two lattice points where they hit perfect. So what's the slope? How much rise, how much run? What you gonna do? It rises 5, and it runs 2. Now, there's going to be some people that are like, but I want to do it with points. It's 0, 0, and this one's 2, comma 5, and I want to do it with points. But guess what? When you go 5 minus 0, you get 5, and 2 minus 0, you're going to get 2. So you could do it either way, and the answer is 5 over 2. To get a lot of people would say that that's 2.5. 5 divided into two parts. If you earned 5 bucks for working up for the neighbor for a couple of minutes and you got a friend you got to share it with, 5 divided by 2, you each get 250. Okay, so that's the slope is 2.5. What's the y-intercept, though? Zero. zero. Look at how it touches at the y at zero. So I can write the equation. Y equals 5 over 2. Same thing as 2.5. If you want to say 2.5, that's fine. And then you got to say the Y-intercept. That's at the end. And it touches at 0. So therefore, plus 0. And there's your answer. That's the equation for that line. Y equals MX plus B. Jack, what's the M part again? Slope. The slope. So in this case, it's 5 over 2. What's the y-intercept? Where the heck did I get this zero from? Because it hit at zero on the y-axis here. It hit right there at zero on the y-axis. All right, I can do this, can you? Everybody write y equals mx plus b, and then think to yourself, what kind of slope is that? Is that the kind that's infinite, or is that the kind that's a zero slope? E and A, do you know if it's a zero slope or is it an infinite slope? Uh, infinite. Nope, infinite are the ones that go like this. Thank you for trying. So this one's a zero slope. 
So then I'm going to go put y equals 0, x. If you say 0, x, can't you just, like, throw it out? Yes, 0, x is just gone. Plus b. Well, what's the y-intercept? Right there. What is it? 4. So could another kid have written y equals just 4? Yeah, these are the same because 0x is like it's not even there. So y equals 4 was the equation. It's in slope-intercept form. All right, one last one. Avia, what's the y-intercept? Where is it touching the y? Negative 4 is correct. So I go y equals mx plus b. That's how I'd always start. And then the y-intercept goes here, which you just said was negative 4. And then can I tell the slope? It's not easy, but I can because that's a lattice point, and so is that. And then I can go, how much rise, how much run? Kennedy, looking at these two points, how much rise do I have? Good. And how much run do I have? Three. So my slope, can you put it together and tell me the rise over the run is in the slope, Kennedy? Yes. Yep. And there's your equation. Okay. Almost done. If I can get through this, then after lunch, we can just start the worksheet. So let's finish this thing. Let's power through. Live. Y equals, can you finish it? What's that form I keep saying? Y equals mx plus b. Then tell me what you know. Avia, do you know something? Um, is 0, 7, so which do you think I should put, the 0 or the 7? The yep. And where does it go? The yep. So the b is 7. And how about the slope? It says right here, one half. So you can just put a one half right there. Boom, done. Nice job. This we've never done before. So I have to teach you one more equation. Everybody, seriously, of all of the things I've just taught you, you've already seen y equals mx plus b like a million times. You saw that in algebra. If you did algebra, you saw y equals mx plus b but you might never have seen this one. Everybody, please write it down right next to this. Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. Can't leave quite yet for lunch. Believe me, I like a long lunch myself, but not quite yet. That is called point slope because it's got the slope right here. And this is the other really important part. Please highlight these. Here and here is where you can stick in a point. That's why we call it point slope, because it can have a point right there. Like this point right here can go in there, in this spot and this spot. That's where the point goes. And you already know that M is the slope. So I'm going to go erase the M, and what do you think I'm going to put in for the M? This is not a trick question. What do you think the M is? Negative 3 fourths. Good. And then I can erase this and this and put in, but here's the mistake everybody makes, unless they really think close. They put the 4 here, and they put the negative 1 here. Why is that wrong? Because the first one should be the Y. Look, it's right by the Y. It's the Y of it. So negative one goes here and the four goes there. That is something new you haven't maybe ever learned before. It's called point slope. It's where there's a point and a slope in the same equation. And I'm gonna see if anybody can help me do it. Y minus, that's the next thing. Y1 equals, what comes next? 
M, and then what finishes it? Let's see how good your short-term memory is after lunch. See if you remember that. Pause for a second while we go to lunch. So when we last left our hero, they were using this formula. I think you all know what M does. It's a one word, say it. Slope, that's the slope. What about this spot? What do you put there? There and there, that's the what? That's the point. So if I give you a point, you can stick in the X here and the Y there. If I give you a slope, you put it there. So here is a slope and a point, ready? I want you to use slope of two. And by the way, that's two over one, same thing. And the point of three comma five. If you put those in the right spots, you're done. So easy. The only thing we could make you do from there is solve it for y, but. Ian, right above it, we're gonna write y minus, and then you tell me what's the first thing I put right there. Um, just remind me where we are again. Can you see up here on the board? Yeah. Okay, so we're doing y minus y1, so our point, I'm gonna let you catch back up again. You get close, the point is at three comma five, so the X is three and the Y is five. I'm gonna have you answer in just a second. We're gonna go over to Nico. Can you tell me what goes right here? Yep, because the point's Y value goes there. Equals M, Stella, what goes where the M is? Slope, hint. What's slope? Yep. So that goes there. And then X minus, and then, Grace, what goes in the X1 spot? Um, three. Three, because that's the X of our point. And there it is. That looks long and scary, but it's just point slope form of an equation. Could you distribute it out? Yeah, I wouldn't like mark it wrong if you distributed it out, but you wouldn't have to. What if they make you solve for y? Then you should. If they have make you solve for y, then you'd have to add 5 to both sides. And I'll solve this one. It would be 2 times x is 2x. 2 times the negative 3 makes negative 6, but then you add 5. Negative 6 plus the 5, x minus 1. And there's your little y equals mx plus b equation. So who's got a short-term memory? Y minus, what was that? Um, y1. Y1, very good, equals m times x minus x1. Very good. This is where you put the what? Right here? What's that? Where you put the what? Point. And the M is where you put the slope. All right. So here's something that looks kind of complicated, but it isn't that bad. They tell me the Y intercept, and they say they want it perpendicular to this line. Sounds really scary. But do you remember that parallel things have the same slope? If they wanted parallel, I would have just said y equals 4, because 4 would be the slope. If you had a slope with a 4, it's the same as this one. And I'd use this equation again. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And they told me a clue. They'd want the slope to be 4. But wait. They said perpendicular to. This is one of those algebra topics that you might not remember. Stay with me. Two slopes that are the same, like if I have a slope of four and you have a slope of four, then we're parallel. But if it's the negative reciprocal, then it's called perpendicular. So it's not just that it's one-fourth. Who can finish it? It's close. You are really late. In fact, 
I gotta look up and see if you're 10 minutes late, because then I'd be considering an absence. Okay. Can you. Is there noise that. That's why I want to bottle. Okay, all right. So, back to there should be a negative here. We got interrupted there with somebody who was coming back really late. All right, so anyway, that is perpendicular to that. It's negative, opposite of whatever it was, and it's the flip, okay? So I'm gonna give you another one like that. Let's imagine the test had a y equals uh, negative six x plus four. And they said, I want it to be parallel. Would this be parallel to that? Hint, would those be parallel? Parallel means the same. Would those be parallel? Yes. Would they be exactly the same as each other? No. One of them's got a y-intercept of 4. The other one's got a y-intercept of 5. But are they parallel? Yeah. You just got to check these. What about perpendicular? That's the thing where you make it the opposite flip. So what should go here? Trevor? Opposite and flip it. That's opposite, now flip it. One over six. If you didn't know how to flip something that doesn't have a top and a bottom, would you agree that I can always put divided by one under anything? And then if you flip it, you can see it better that it's a one over six. So you gotta flip it and you gotta make it opposite. So that, my friends, is two perpendicular lines because there's slopes. One of them's negative six, the other is opposite and flipped. That's perpendicular lines. All right, how about these two? y equals 6x minus 4 and y equals 6x minus 11. Are they parallel or perpendicular? Come on, this is an easy one. Parallel. They're parallel because their what's are the what? The, the slopes are the same. Yep. If I wanted them to be perpendicular, I'd change that to what? Negative one sixth. Yep. Those are perpendicular. One last thing before we are almost done here, and then you'll have not missed anything. Your homework is the Schoology quiz called U3L1. I want everyone right now to open it up and start it. It's not timed or anything. Don't be that late, please. That's really a lot. Okay, extra bonus round. Uh, what problem number is that? Number eight? eight. Read me the two points. On number eight, a lot of people are getting there and asking me this question, and it reminds me that I really should explain this better. Seven, Can you read me the two points on number eight? Seven, negative one. I will explain it to everybody. You can have a seat. Thank you. So first thing you need is the slope. And I think I explained that part well enough. The slope is 9 minus the negative 1. That ends up meaning 9 plus 1 over 7 or 2 minus 7. So that's 9 plus 1 is 10 over negative 5, and that's negative 2. I bet a lot of people could have done that part. But here's the part. I know I told you this equation. And I know you probably wrote that down somewhere, so you probably could have done that. This negative 2 goes here. But the thing I never really finished was what do you do to get the rest of it? I did make a big deal about how that's where the point would go, is in those two spots. But which point do you pick? You can pick either one. So why not pick this one? Because it doesn't have any negatives. Hey, I'm, I'm, I want my life to be easier too. So I'm going to just pick two nine. I'll pick a two for the X and a nine for the Y. And if you can simplify this down, you've got your equation. 
y minus 9 equals, what was the slope again? Negative 2, x minus 2. And then you have to know how to do algebra and add 9 to both sides, and then you'll get your final answer. So that's the part I didn't feel like I explained very well. You pick either point. Doesn't matter. I just picked that one because I felt like it was easier. And I stick it in here and here. And you simplify it down. That's how you do number eight.